So a lot of people have been asking about the paddle shift wiring it in. Um, originally when I bought the motor, I got the OEM harness with it. I do have it over there. So what I did is I pulled some pins out of that one. It's pretty easy. It does look a little confusing at first because this is so blocked in and whatnot. This is taped up. These pop right out. Just use like a pick. I used like an L-shaped pick for that. Let's see where it's at. Where is it? I don't know where I left it. But I popped it out. Take off the tape and then you'll be exposed to this and then I took this off right here. Now this has all the numbers. To wire in the select shift you're looking for the one that has 103 pins. There is a good diagram uh, you could get from Ford Racing if anybody wants it. Uh, they emailed it to me. And then Power by the Hour has another one where they show you how to wire in their specific switch. Same numbers. You're going to be pinning into pin number 51 for the... It's like a common uh, wire, I guess. They both share that wire. And then you're going to be tapping into 22 and 23, which are these here, uh, to wire in the up and down shift. And then 51 is this one here on its own. So what I did is I took out the wires from the OEM harness. I unpinned it, took three wires out. Here comes that train again. Fucking train every time. So anyway, I took three of them out of the harness, uh, the OEM harness. I uh, soldered and heat shrinked them, extended them. I labeled them here, passed them through. So white 22, um, green is supposed to be 51, and yellow is 23. Pinned them into here, so now I know which ones go where. Now, I know originally I said I was gonna do the steering wheel, and I still am. But for now, the tuner uh, I was going to go to said they rather not even tune it if it doesn't have the uh, select shift wired in yet. So I'm doing that first. Um, there's this little switch panel from Power by the Hour. I actually got it from a friend. And it has, I mean, it does mount perfectly in there. Boop, it pops right in. But then you got this and then where you're going to put the uh, window thing. So... I might find a way to put it over here, maybe over here or something like that. I don't know. But for now, this is what I'm using just to make sure everything's good. It has an illumination uh, connection, a ground, and then it just does the upshift, uh, the common one, which is pin number 51, and then downshift or up, down, whatever. I don't know which one exactly it is, but that's how it wires in. You're only going to be using these top two and these on the left. Now, that common wire, the pin number 51, I don't know if... All it is is power because what I did is I supplied power to that connection. I grounded it out and illumination and, and it was fine. I hooked up the test light to let's say the upshift, pressed the up and the light lit up, pressed it down and it lit up. So I don't know, maybe that's just power or it just has to supply power to both the, uh, the connections. I don't know, but my plan is to get it to upshift and then downshift on here, but I have to figure out what that is. So for now, I'm using the switch. I know it's kind of down here, you're up there, but I mean, it should be cool for now. Put it at that in there. Again, it's just these three wires. That's it. Don't pay $400 extra for the control pack to have that wired in. You can do this shit yourself. If you can wire up the car, the Coyote Swap, then you can do this. Just got to repin the computer. I mean, the harness, I know that sounds bad, but shit, I hate doing that. And My boy Carlo showed me how to do it, so that's what we're doing easy so again repin it from there uh there's many or actually there's two that i've seen sorry not many but there's two uh ways of how to do it ford racing has one and powered by the hour and they are both identical again i made these really long about 40 feet of this i use maybe 13 feet on each one i'll run it into here into the uh, center console for now and then later on i'll wire it up to the steering column Another thing I did is I changed the shifter the way it was because that cable I felt like was going to get in the way. I'm going to show you guys what I did real quick. Here we are underneath the car again. So the cable was going to come all the way around and, and it honestly thought, I honestly felt like it was going to be in the way. So what I did is um, I actually got a rod from a friend. I don't know if you can see it. It's from a 1985 four-cylinder mustang it's different than the like uh 
87 and 93 four cylinder rods because uh i know someone who was running that one and they had to cut it and extend it but this one here it literally is like made for this let's see if i can light it up a little bit it's literally like made for this fucking swap man it, it, it hooks up right there up and out of the way of the transmission i did have to cut that little tab off right there you see on the transmission and then i faced the bracket inward faced it up and took the stud out and faced it inward and it literally is fucking perfect up and out of the way of the exhaust that's facing up the little stud facing in towards the transmission rod comes up grooved for the tunnel pretty much and away from the transmission away from the exhaust away from everything pop that in like that and i've gone through the gears everything's fine i've already started the car let me get up i've already started the car and it started right up. I did have an issue with that other cable I had not allowing it to be fully in the park. So it wouldn't send uh, the starter request to the solenoid. So I had to like, you know, take it off, make sure it was fully in park. And that's how I was able to start. Um, it is rolling back and forth. I'm filling up the transmission little by little. Got to let it warm up. Put some fluid in, let it warm up, put some more fluid in and all that. But. As of right now, it's starting to dry. I just need to get my exhaust, and then I'll be able to actually drive it. Wire in the select shift, and then I need to find a way to make this to stop and uh, D. Because before I had that little stopper thing. But apparently, if you pull it past D, you can damage the valve body. I'm not sure if that's true. That's what I was told. But maybe I'll do something in the shifter to, to stop it. I mean, I'm the only one that's going to be driving the car, and I know stop at D. But you never know. That's it for now. You guys got any questions or if anyone wants that diagram, um, let me know. I'll forward it to you. That's it.